Hello and welcome to the breakdown on the papare.com where we look back at last week's action in, in the Singer Schools Rugby League and what a weekend it was once again uh, Sabir our first match in segment 1A which we are looking at Wesley College storming to a win everyone expected them to beat DS but it was a pretty good win 64 points to uh, 12 is how it finished 40 points to 7 at half time Avantali the man of the match uh, one of the twins and uh, 10 tries for Wesley uh, Sabir Avishkali Dinu Ranavira Tariq Jurampati Avantali Oma Kutubdin with two tries, Zan Sabah the captain with uh, a try as well, Avantali, Saumya, Avanta Hashan also with uh, the uh, try and Avishkali with five conversions and Jurangpati with two and a really good uh, all-round performance by Wesley. Indeed Shanaka, what I like on this game is Shanaka, everyone is backing their skip up, he was marshalling the team uh, so well, everyone's contributing so he, they have the confidence on the skipper so leadership quality also we should talk about this game mm -hmm. and also think, uh, talking about the league combination, the twins and the triplets playing in the team, so they all like fast rugby, pretty much playing like Japan. Yeah, they are they're playing very much uh, an open brand of rugby. They like to run it wide uh, at the outset. And uh, yes, it's it's important what you say about leadership because we've seen some teams suffer without leaders on the field. For instance, Trinity suddenly were completely leaderless when their captain and vice captain were off. So that leadership quality is really important and Wesley are showing that. Indeed, indeed. Also impressive, uh, coach uh, Jeevan made few changes. Omar Kutubin in the wing and uh, Zubair is not playing. So Jurampati is playing at the fly -out. That really did work. Aishk and uh, Jurampati combination, 19 combination. So pretty much they scored with the backs, so that shows the uh, strategy very well. Yeah, it was a good performance. Running in 10 tries is never easy. DS managing to score two uh, through their rolling mall as well, so they'll be happy about managing to get on the board, uh, but uh, still looks like they're destined for sixth place and in that part of the draw. Yeah, uh, looking at the halftime, it's 47. Perhaps they could have scored a bit more, but DS, all the matches, if you look at it, they are doing pretty well in the second half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are because they are a good defensive side and they work really hard as well, so their organization in defense is good. I think uh, Sumed Malavana has worked very hard on. Uh, their defence but yes I think uh, with uh, Sabah coming off I think he came off just about five or ten minutes into the second half and maybe that uh, lacked the intensity a little bit for Wesley when uh, in the second half as well. Indeed uh, moving on to the next game Sharaka Royal versus St Joseph's uh, it's a shocking result actually 27 all no one expected that because St Joseph's leading 24 points to 10 but what a comeback if you remember last year what happened again a great comeback by a royal against the uh, Tariq Salih's team, but this year also they did pretty much the same. Yeah, it's been an amazing clash in the last few years. This St. Joseph's versus uh, Royal clash has been superb. Light back to the controversy of Johan Kayser getting sent off uh, a few years ago. And then last time when Royal came back, now this time again, St. Joseph's in a convincing lead. And uh, then Royal coming back. It's been one of those real uh, amazing fixtures in uh, the school's rugby calendar. At half time, St. Joseph's leading 24 points to 10. The match finishing 27 all. Chatra Seneviratna, the uh, Josephian fly half. As I thought, Sabir, before the game I thought he was going to be the key player in this match and he was and when St. Joseph's lost him for that 10 minutes in the second half that's when the wheels fell off a little bit for them they couldn't catch up uh, for that 10 minute period. Indeed that drop goal saved their game uh, of a scenario just like Trinity's game because they scored only three points in the second half that shows clearly and also the try scorers if you look at uh, Shanaka Chatur Senerata 12 points uh, three conversion one penalty and one drop goal and the captain Ramesh Priyanka one try Devon Fernando one try while in the field to one try for St. Joseph's and for Royal, Ayesh Madhuranga the prop forward two tries, Ashok Vijay Kumar seven points, two conversion and a penalty and Muhammad Nabil and Fajri in the hooker one try apiece and also quite interesting changes on this game Shan, Captain Ramesh Priyanka also known as Cheetah from his centre position he's playing as a scrum off and that led to run from break soon from the set pieces in the lineouts and the scrums also in the breakdown shot. Yeah because I think the biggest problem for St. Joseph was that they couldn't get him the ball when he was playing at the wing a bit of a defensive um, uh, issue there so they can't play him in the centres where they wanted him to uh, but bringing him in at the scrum half a master stroke to be able to let him uh, run a little bit more to have more of the ball in hand and he did create a little a few problems for uh, for Ron on the day but Royal once again relying very heavily on that rolling mall that's what brought them 
all their tries as well. So uh, they know what their game is about and they will execute perfectly. And also another change in the Royal lineup. Ashok Kujekum was starting at the number 15 jersey. There's no Ovinaski. But uh, I am not very really sure why Mahima Gamage is coming a little too late because he was so good in the last year's game. He has quite fast legs, quite long legs rather. He also had the opportunity when the uh, winger just could have offloaded and scored one more try. Instead, he went into contact, so that also changed their winning uh, momentum for Royal. And they're pretty much playing for their strength. We saw their uh, prop forward scoring two tries from that driving mall. So their strength is very clear, but their backs are very poor. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. And I think the backs have come to expect the forwards to do all the work. So I think they switch off during the game, which is a little bit uh, of a problem because they know they're probably not going to get the ball. So they just hang around in uh, attack. And in defense, suddenly it's difficult to switch on immediately. So I think that might be the problem that they're keeping their backs on ice uh, for way too long in the game, which is why St. Thomas's were able to come uh, through at the last moment because that pressure was on and suddenly the backs had to switch on and they couldn't do it. So uh, maybe that's something that they need to look at to just try and run the backs a little bit more in the games even though they have this obviously dominant weapon. And also Shanaka, uh, I'm not really sure why Ashok Vijay Kumar, when they were 27 all, uh, almost the last move, he just kicked the ball into touch because they're almost between the 40, 10 meter mark and the 22 meter mark. It's an opportunity for them because their forwards were doing under and 10%. They were so fidgety throughout the game. They still had the momentum to score one more try. I wonder whether the referee said playing advantage or not. I don't know what came across uh, Vijay Kumar's uh, mind on that time or he was settling for the draw. He just kicked the ball out on full. Maybe they are going to take the draw on that game. Yeah, maybe they were happy to take the draw because 24 10 at half time, you'd imagine a team would take 27 all at that particular particular point if you gave it to them. So maybe Vijay Kumar decided let's not take any more risks and just settle for this one. And one beautiful thing which you never see from the other schools when they were playing Royal, Royal sets up the line out, St. Joseph sacked the line out and they just uh, drill them into the touch. So uh, that's one thing uh, to see on this game which they have not None of the team did. Yeah, well, they were working hard on it, and I think you need to have uh, the, the confidence in the referee to know that he's going to allow the sack. So if you speak to them beforehand, you know that this is what's going to happen. Then it is a it is a weapon that can be countered. So Chen Joseph had done a lot of homework on how to defend that mall, and they did. All right, moving on to the next game, Shanaga. It's a uh, Trinity versus St Thomas's game of the week, they say, and uh, what a comeback by St Thomas's. Five three in the half time. 23-20 in the full time. Uh, yeah, it was 5-3 at half time and then suddenly it was 15-3 as well to Trinity. They stormed ahead in the uh, second half. They counter-attacked and Sanushka Bevikrama uh, just went uh, through. Avishka Sheik also ran through and eventually it was Dange that scored the try that took them up to that 15 points to 3 mark. But uh, Ashwan Tahera helped spark a comeback, uh, Sabir, because he started standing at first receiver and really helping his forwards out by changing the point of attack. And the Sotomian front five, I thought, were absolutely outstanding. Uh, they did a lot in defence in the first 40 minutes and in the second 40 minutes they did a lot in attack. And uh, of course the game completely changed because it was Trinity's game to lose and when Rahul Karnatilaka got his red card, that just completely dropped the momentum for Trinity. It um, made their confidence levels come down by a huge amount and that's what allowed uh, St. Thomas's to come back uh, into the game. And uh, to their credit, it was because of the pressure they were building that Rahul got Sinbin. But uh, if that didn't happen, who knows how that game would have ended. Let's have a look at the try point scorers for Trinity. Shalin Dalakon, Dilushk Dange and Avishk Sheik scoring tries. And Tusila Pereira and Lashin Vijay Surya scoring a conversion and a penalty for Royal uh, St. Thomas. rather. Harit Senanayaka, Navin Hinakan Kanamge scoring two vital tries and conversion by Ashwan Tehera and a drop goal, the match winning drop goal by Sarit Nanayakara. And also talking about you just keep out Hinakan Kanamge. Well, you can't keep him out uh, because he is a very good broken field runner. And if you give him a little bit of space, he'll he'll exploit it. But the problem for St. Thomas's throughout the first 60 minutes was that they didn't manage to work the ball beyond Ashwan Tahera. And that's a bit of a problem for them. Happened in the Royal game as well. Absolutely. And their strength is obviously in the backs. They've got Mayon Jayawardena uh, at the back as well. I don't know if you remember the first very first move they did against Royal uh, Sabir where they worked it wide and they made so much ground but they don't seem to be doing that as a starting point uh, St. Thomas's and uh, that's something that I think they will need to work on to realize where they've got the uh, strength and to go to that quickly. 
but i also uh, booming the disanayaka threw a long pass that's the one that got intercepted and dange scored at the other end so they're trying to get the ball to him but they're not trying to get the ball to him in the best effective way so that's something that St. Thomas's need to uh, work on but it was a good performance from them I thought Harik Serenayaka was excellent in the line out as well got a lot of trouble uh, from um, uh, Dhammapal and Alhakun who were contesting those line outs really well uh, for Trinity as well but Sarit Nanayakara's drop goal you could see that just completely deflated the Trinity and it was 15 all at that point the drop goal came from nowhere you saw Serenayaka dropping Nanayakara rather dropping back into the pocket and calling for the ball I never thought he'd get it because it didn't look like a planned move and uh, the ball just managed to sail through the uprights and that was the moment that changed the game. And also I like the fact, uh, fact uh, Pandula De Silva led the team because he was not really into his standard uh, in the last three games but this game, oh my words, he was so good in terms of decision making and in terms of leadership. Yeah, he was and I think he stepped up because he needed to. I had a bit of a go at him, got uh, some flack myself because, uh, because, of, uh, because of that particular incident but I think Pandula needed to step up and uh, he's a big boy, he's a good ball carrier as well and he's an experienced player so he needs to lead from the front and the way he did it this time that entire front five went with him uh, Sabir Tehan Pereira had an outstanding game, one bad pass but um, outstanding game the rest of the time Adisha Hadun Patrin and even when he came on uh, we had um, uh, Priya, uh, we had the um, vice captain uh, can't remember his name, but he came on from the bench and he was uh, absolutely outstanding uh, there as well. So that front five really took their cue from Pandora de Silva and they were super. So those are the uh, analysis for the segment one and we'll have a look at the points table for you. Yeah, the points looking uh, like we expected them uh, to be uh, Sabir after that unbeaten clash between Trinity and St. Thomas's. But St. Thomas's managing to win that one and Trinity dropping into second place now with um, 21 points and Thomas's and 17 and a half points uh, Trinity have Royal with that draw stay in third place and that's something that uh, they will want to build on and try and finish in second place after the Bradby so 14 points to them uh, Wesley coming pretty close as well 13 and a half points they've got a big match coming up as well they will try and be uh, looking at the uh, third place finish also uh, but Joe's NDS pretty much bringing up the rear at fifth and sixth it's unlikely that they will advance from this point onwards. Well, that's the points table and looking forward to next week's uh, game, Sabir. We have obviously the biggest match of the season, um, uh, the Bradby. Royal taking on Trinity at their home grounds. Trinity possibly without their captain, that's still being discussed as we speak. Uh, so with that defeat at the hands of St. Thomas's, Royal coming back, you think Royal are probably favourites for that one? Uh, mentally, they do have because uh, once you will trail by in the first half in a huge margin and coming back to make it a draw, that gives mental boost. But it all depends on uh, what sort of starting lineup that they're going to have and also it depends on the decision making that they're going to play. And also Trinity, they are pretty fast, they have pretty decent backs compared to Royal. That's their, uh, skill that's their strength uh, it's very clear so probably they'll be looking at the ball to kick and play territorial whereas royal even they probably rely on playing face by face even inside their own half yeah and i think trinity will need their seniors to step up this is Pereira, the vice captain he's going to be probably leading the side if rahul is not available he will need to step up his game because he's kicking at goal also is something he needs to work on and guys like sangha singer sheik and abe Vikrama, they all really need to uh, step up if trinity are going to compete in this bradby and it should be a very very good game uh, the other match is um, we have st thomas is taking on wesley at the sierra fc grounds should be a very entertaining game so we're probably going to be a high scoring affair because both these teams like like to run at uh, each other but uh, given the fact that St. Thomas are unbeaten at the moment it's difficult to see them going down to Wesley but they still have a few injury scares Vijay Ratna got taken off uh, we had Mayon Jawadana also who got taken off Sachita Jayatilaka also not sure whether he'll start or whether Ahangama will start so lots of things to think about there and St. Thomas has had some emotionally draining games so maybe this is a good time to play them. Of course and also we have uh, DS playing against uh St. Joseph. St. Joseph, so uh, probably uh, Joseph have uh, time to get more points, but still I think they are going to play in the plate, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like even if they beat uh, DS by a lot, they would still be, have to be content with uh, fifth place regardless of the other results. And uh, that's all we have for the segment 1A of the Single Schools Rugby 2016, and do join us for the 1B.